tessellations, regular, semi-regular, or neither. We're at 9.6b. We have 11 previous videos for Chapter 9, and they're linked in the description in the Geometry Playlist if you need them or become lost or confused. A tessellation, or tiling, is a repeating pattern that completely covers a plane with no gaps or overlaps. So you can think of a big tile floor. And the measures of the angles that meet at each vertex must add up to 360 degrees. So here we have one, two, three angles where they're meeting at this vertex. Angle, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equal 360 degrees. Each colorful angle of the quadrilateral occurs once at each vertex. So we have a red, blue, green, yellow. Red, blue, green, yellow would repeat at every vertex. And the red angle is 70 degrees. The yellow angle is 100 degrees. The blue angle is 60 degrees. The green angle is 130 degrees. So if we total them all up, it would be 360 degrees. And because the angle measures of any quadrilateral total 360 degrees, any quadrilateral can be used to tessellate the plane. There's four copies of the quadrilateral that meet at each vertex. The angle measures of any triangle will add up to 180 degrees. This means we can use any triangle to tessellate a plane. We've got angles 1, 2, and 3 in the triangle, and if we add the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3, it'll total 180 degrees. Six copies of the triangle meet at each vertex. Kind of looks like a hexagon. And if we add up this angle 1 and 2 and 3 with the 1 and 2 and 3, that are meeting at this right here, this vertex, they'll total 360 degrees. If a pattern has translation symmetry, it must continue infinitely in both directions of the translation vector. And tessellations can have translation symmetry along more than one vector. So here we've got a vector here showing how it translated to here, and then it's going to translate here, and then here. Here we have a vector showing our yellow shape here, and it's translating down, and then it would translate again and translate again. They can also have line and rotational symmetry. We can use transformations to create tessellations. We can copy a given figure and use it to create a tessellation. So here we've got this triangle. We rotate the triangle 180 degrees about the midpoint of one side. Now we've made this parallelogram. We translate the pair of triangles to here, and we can make a row. We can do it again and again. Then we can translate the row of triangles to make a tessellation. If you look at this pattern, if we look right here, you'll see where these meet. We've got a red square, a green triangle, a blue triangle, a yellow square, and then another blue triangle. So we've got two squares and three triangles meet at each vertex. So it'll do it again and again. Over here, we've got two squares, a triangle, and a hexagon that meet at each vertex. So each of these are meeting at a vertex like right here, see? We've got a hexagon, two squares, and a triangle. So we need to remember that a regular polygon is both equiangular and equilateral. We learned that in video 6.1a, back from chapter 6. And we also learned in that same lesson that an irregular polygon is not equiangular or equilateral. And this is very important to remember because it's going to help us classify the tessellations. So for classifying tessellations, they can be classified into groups of regular, semi-regular, or neither. A regular tessellation is formed by congruent regular polygons. 
So here we've got three regular hexagons that meet at each vertex. Here we've got six triangles that meet at each vertex. And these are regular tessellations. A semi-regular tessellation is formed by two or more different regular polygons. So they're still regular polygons, so it's semi-regular because we've got two or more. So here we've got two regular hexagons and two triangles that meet at each vertex. For this one, we've got two regular octagons and a square that meet at each vertex. And for this one, it's like the colorful red and yellow one we had before. Two squares and three triangles meet at each vertex. For it to be classified as neither, we've got irregular polygons that are used. And the polygon here is not equiangular or equilateral, so that's irregular. And this one can fool you because it looks like it's all pentagons, but they're not regular pentagons with equilateral sides. If you look very carefully, this side here is much smaller than these sides, so it's not equilateral which also means it's not equiangular, right? We can determine if polygons will tessellate by finding if the measures of the angles that meet at each vertex will add up to 360 degrees. If we're only given regular pentagons, nothing else, well, each angle of a pentagon is 108 degrees, and the angles that meet won't total 360 degrees. So no, if we're only given regular pentagons, they won't tessellate. We can see we need a triangle here, and then we'd have two or more different regular pentagons, wouldn't we? That would be a semi-regular if we did that, but if we only have regular pentagons, it won't work, it won't tessellate. If we're given equiangular triangles, well, each angle of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees, and six times 60 degrees is 360 degrees, the vertices that meet add up to 360 degrees, so yes, they will tessellate. Our next lesson, we're going to talk about dilations. We're even going to draw one with a compass, and we're going to talk about what they look like in the coordinate plane. After that, we're going to talk about order of transformations and whether it matters if we reflect first or rotate or vice versa, what happens. Then we're going to move on to chapter 10. So remember that the measures of the angles that meet at each vertex must add up to 360 degrees for us to have a tessellation. And remember that we have regular, semi-regular, or neither for classifying them. And the regular ones are formed by congruent regular polygons. The semi-regular ones are formed by two or more different regular polygons. And if it's neither, it's because they're made up of irregular polygons. All right? So I hope this was helpful. Hit that like button for me if you can, and I'll see you next time. Bye.